Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we saw how they calculated the innermost radius of the Bohr atom, the hydrogen atom, and it turned out to be 53 picometers. Now, starting with the same principles, that the centripetal force equals the Coulomb force, which meant that V squared around the orbit of a nucleus has to equal to K, E squared divided by MR, E of course being the charge on the electron or the proton, and in tandem with that, using the Bohr uh, not the Bohr radius, but the, the Broglie wavelength being equal to h over the momentum, which is m times v, and realizing that, this, uh, that the orbit of the electron has to be an integer number of wavelengths, so that the circumference is equal to n times lambda, or 2 pi r being equal to n times lambda, we're going to use that to figure out the radius of all the radii in the Bohr atom, in the hydrogen atom. So using this here, what we can do is we can replace lambda by being 2 pi r over n. So we're going to write that lambda is equal to 2 pi times the radius divided by n, and n representing the energy number, representing the various orbits around the nucleus, which later on we'll realize will become one of the quantum numbers of the atom. So what we're going to do now is we're going to write the velocity in terms of h over m times lambda, lambda not being equal to 2 pi r over n instead of just 2 pi r that we used in the previous video. So here we can see then that the velocity has to, by, necess by necessity, equal to h divided by m times lambda, lambda being 2 pi r divided by n, so the n goes then to the numerator. And then if we square that, so we can set them equal to this equation right here, we can say that v squared is equal to h squared n squared divided by m squared 4 pi squared r squared. And this equation can then be equated to this equation, again, to eliminate v. And so we only have r left, the radius, but now we'll have the radius for the various radii of all the orbits around the nucleus. So setting this equation equal to this equation, we can write that Ke squared over mr must therefore equal h squared n squared divided by m squared 4 pi squared r squared. And again, this m will cancel out with that m, this r will cancel out with that r. Now we're going to solve for the only r that's left in the equation. So we have r is equal to n squared, so we'll isolate the n squared, times, so what we have left here is we have an h squared in the numerator divided by a 4 pi squared times m times k times e squared. So now you see that the only difference from what we saw in the previous video, that now the radius is going to be n squared times h well, this quantity right here, which was the Bohr radius, so now we can write that r is equal to n squared times a sub naught, a sub naught being representative of the Bohr radius, so this is going to be equal to n squared times 53 picometers, known as the Bohr radius. Which means that to go to the second orbit, from the first orbit, now the radius of the second orbit is going to be four times the radius of the first orbit, the radius of the third orbit is going to be nine times the radius of the first orbit and so forth. So in other words, we could say that the radius of the first orbit is equal to a sub naught. The radius of the second orbit is going to be n squared or four times a sub naught. The radius of the third orbit is going to be nine times a sub naught. The radius of the fourth orbit is going to be 16 times a sub naught and so forth. So you can see that the orbits become very quickly become much larger than the inner orbit and then on the next video, we're going to show you the associated energies of those electrons in those various orbits. But you can see that how slowly they unravel the secret of this atom, understanding the structure of the, at least the simple atom of hydrogen, which of course then would be used to try and understand the structure of atoms that are more complex. And we'll see those videos later as well.